Welcome to Reality Hour, the first episode of 2020. I'm Adam Samuel. Today, it's new dawn, it's a new day. We are talking America's Got Talent, the champions. First show we are kicking off the year with. Uh, joining me for this podcast, my co-host Eric. How are you doing today, Eric? Doing good. Um, we're trying something a little bit different on um, with this new season of AGT, which is we're gonna. I wrote a post about on my personal blog um, last week about some ideas I have for the show. We're trying some nuts with this today. Um, so first of all, if you're subscribing to us via the audio edition, you're not listening to this right now because that's been discontinued. I'm sorry, but I want. I was looking at the stats, and, like, nobody was actually listening to us from the audio edition. Everyone, and we, we just want to put everyone on YouTube. It's like, a, put all my energy into making this video version the best it could possibly be. Speaking of which, let's start with our first actual segment of the episode, which is headlines. What do you got for us today? Well, the two, the two things that I want to talk about, honestly, are the fact that an Ellen game show spoof of The Masked Singer is being turned into an actual TV show. That's the first thing. I'm, I'm just blown away that The Masked Dancer is actually going to be a real thing that's picked up by Fox for a real series. Eric, I'm waiting for the moment when someone is doing, like, the worm on stage, and all of a sudden we have that awkward moment where the mask where falls the off. Where the mask falls off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If that happens, I will actually watch the show. Otherwise, no. There's no way. You're, there's nothing you could do to get me to watch this show. I have regretfully watched The Masked Singer, but only, I only enjoyed it because Chris Daughtry was on the show. There's no way in hell you can get me to enjoy Masked Dancer. I'm sorry. Eric, this year is going to be the year of the mask, I feel. Uh, this show is kind of just, it's blown up. I, multiplying. <laughs> I would almost maybe like, can you imagine America's Got Talent in the Masked Singer? The masked rea- variety show. Oh God! The, the, <laughs> honestly, you know what? It's working for them. Good for them. Glad they found a hit format. Can't wait to see them drive it into the ground. Anyway, <laughs> it's so dumb, but yet so. I don't even so know. <laughs> it, it's just so dumb. We can leave it at that. And meanwhile, America All starts next month, and we're getting some spoilers, which we were not going to talk about on this podcast. Woo, woo. <laughs> Because Adam and I are thinking we're actually going to go into the season completely blind. So that should be fun, possibly. I, I will admit I'm not 100% completely blind. There's one name I've heard of just because... But I'm not going to watch any performances from anyone until the show starts. I do want to okay. say, for for that one person who is going to be on American Idol, who we know of, I totally called it. Um, it was a singer from America's Got Talent. Last season? Two two seasons ago? Two ago. But uh, that I feel like that's a trend we're just going to start seeing. Well, we've already seen it, but it's just going to keep going. Like, they, these shows just recycle singers. Like, mm-hmm. like Simon Cowell recycles. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Where anyway, she... speaking of recycled talent, let's talk about America's Got Talent, the champion, shall yes. we? Yes. So. Eric, it's 2020, kicking the show, the year off with uh, another season of Got Talent the Champions. Uh, the first kind of big thing that I'm noticing from looking at the acts performing in, in the weeks to come, the talent is taking a bit of a drop. Uh, last season we had mostly winners. Uh, not not many this year. Well, we emptied the deck last year, and if we're not doing repeats, this is what we're going to end up with. Yeah, um, some of these acts I don't think I would ever put in the category of being a champion, which which does begs the question. Like by season three, if there is a season three, we'll we'll have we'll have like Yumbo Dump back. Which by the way, <laughs> by the way, they should have been here. Um, and you know you were thinking it too, Eric. I was not thinking it actually. Well, now you not. are. Hodge was enough of a joke act for me. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, what do you think of the episode overall? Well, before we can actually get to the episode, there is kind of one big thing we should talk about, which is uh, the panel, first off, is that right. we have lost, uh, well, you know what's going on with the panel, but the, the new uh, additions are the return of Heidi Klum, which is 
for me, the weirdest part of this, and also Alicia Dixon. So Alicia is a Britain's Got Talent uh, judge and a friend of Simon. I feel like a lot of these people are... I'm, I'm waiting for the day when we have uh, Louis Walsh. <laughs> no. It's just Simon's friends. Like, he just has, like, a... He just pulls and brings Well, you know what? I will say Alicia is actually built the, the second best judge on, it, on BGT. And arguably sometimes the best judge on BGT. So I'm not mad to see her over here. This was not her strongest episode. She didn't really contribute much. But she also didn't take away anything, which was good. The big head scratcher, though, like I said, is for me is Heidi because what what's going on? Like, is she is she coming? Like, yeah, I, I fully expect this to be the panel for the next season of AGT as well. Which is weird. Like, but I'm what, not complaining about it. I don't know. I mean, Heidi, like, she's for me. My favorite judge on the panel for a couple years was Mel B after Howard Stern left. And now I'm looking at this panel. I'm going. It's, <laughs> I don't even know. It's um. It'll be Alicia. You'll like Alicia. Trust me. You didn't see the best of her this episode. She actually does judge sometimes. All right. So you want to kind of start getting into this episode? Uh, you want to? Yeah, let's start. All right. So uh, I think we had ten acts, right? Yep. If I'm doing my math correctly. So the the one thing I will give the show is that we have a format change, which is um instead of it being two acts making it through, it is now four. Which my god, why are we wasting this format on this season? <laughs> like last season. Last season. Yeah, but Yeah. But um yeah, so we will go through the acts and let's kick it off with Patty and Nico, a name that I've Heard in passing, I don't think I actually ever watched one of their performances, maybe like once. Uh, but the shtick basically is, is that uh, it's a guy and he dances with a very older uh, woman. And Patty is actually 85 and Nico is 45. And there's novelty to it, but it's n- it's a thing I would see once and go, eh. Like, it, it'd be something I'd see, like, on one of those Facebook, at, like, you know, you scroll through Facebook, so they have those, like, videos that play for, like, three minutes. I would maybe watch it for, I don't know, ten, and then scroll on by. Yeah, um, here's the thing. I watch them on BGT. I love them on BGT. She is 85 years old. If you take that away, it's a mediocre salsa dance act. But she's 85 years old, and we're tossing around and stuff, so it's kind of cool. What, is it a million dollar act? Is it a winning act? No. But is it a memorable act that I'm happy to see again? Yes. How far did they make it on BGT? Uh, they were in the top 10. Wait, for real? Yeah. Really? Which means they made it to round three. That's it. Out of three? Yeah. That's the final. Yeah. I mean, I kind of came away from this performance going a little... Like I said, it's it's a one-time thing, and I feel like I've seen this shtick. I feel like we've done things like this before on, on America's Got Talent. Like, I, I almost we have, wish... We've had similar acts on BGT. Yes, we have. It just feels kind of like filler a little bit. Like... Yeah. Well, this is a season of filler and a couple <laughs> of good acts. So let's, let's, just, let's, let's just come to terms with that now and move, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> the show is to fill the spaces in between the commercials. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, it was just, it happened. Like nothing, it was, it's like vanilla ice cream. It's like you take a scoop, it's good, but you're not going to really, like, there are better things to get at the parlor. Okay. All right. Uh, next, moving on, we have a familiar singer, Mike Young. I remember this guy. I don't remember which specific season. Who was the winner of his season? Darcy. Darcy. Ooh, that's that's a rough year. That was a good year. That had that's some really good talent. Uh, but yeah, he was a subway singer, and now he kind of 
became very popular because of his perform- appearance on the show. He talks about uh, how he's been touring. He's not really my thing, though. What about you? Nor is he mine. I mean, I liked it better than I thought I would. First of all, I totally forgot he existed until this episode aired. Um, second, <laughs> I remembered him. He wore a hat. I don't remember he had a hat on. All. There were lots of people who wore hats had him. Um, I don't. I didn't remember him at all. I liked the song better than I expected him. Honestly, I think he was of the pure singing acts for the acts that were just singing and no other gimmicks, the weakest of the night. I mean, that's not fair, though, at the same time. Well, because... there were only three singers, so I'm counting. He's the weakest of the three. I mean, I came in to this knowing two singers before the episode, and yeah, the thing is, his thing is that it's all story. It's not – the voice is good, but it's more the story, and mm-hmm. I – those aren't the kind of acts I, I – for me, I'm the exact opposite. Like, I don't – I I'm more talent than backstory. Which me is, too. That's so what I'm saying. that's – this is kind of one of those acts that falls into the far category, like outside of that, where it's all story. But I mean, good for him. I mean, it seems like he's things are going yeah, good, for, good him. for him. I'm, I'm glad he had a hit. I mean, he, so he, he actually performs. I think this was an original this, song. This was the song that was his hit afterwards. That it was collaborated with a DJ on. Oh, uh, was it popular? Did it go anywhere? The show said it did. I don't know. I've never heard it. I'm gonna Google this while we while we continue to talk. Okay. Uh, d- 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 uh, so yeah, he did wear a hat. I see pictures. He's. <laughs> I was right. Yes, well, he has a wore hat. He has a Wikipedia page. That's pretty Wikipedia. cool. Let's see. Yeah. Well, uh, cool. After it says he released "All Right" as a single, along with a lyric video. He had a Kickstarter campaign. Where he raised ninety thousand dollars. Damn. Uh, starred with Never Give Up Tour. Um, I don't know. Oh, the song was uh, dedicated to his late wife. Died earlier in 2019, 2018. Oh no, wait. Uh, Martin confirmed an interview to working with Young on a new song, which will be released uh, called Dreamer. The song was released. That was the song. Yeah, I mean. It, it's not like I said. It's it's perfectly inoffensive. Like it's it's good. It's yeah. It's fine. Uh, but like, but this is also the champions, and yeah, no, it's just fine. All right. Well, let's move on to one of well, one of my favorite acts actually of the night, which was a uh, junior creative. I am a sucker for shadow dancers. I love it. It is one of my outside of like some other categories i would say it would probably be my favorite i love those acts like um i also love when it's like there's some video aspects to it where where it's like the video dancers like there was yeah. freckled sky there was blue journey like those are those are the acts i love on these shows and junior creative is kind of the closest um to, to it they actually won uh M- myanmar scott talent yeah which i would not be able to point to on a map but they pull off a pretty solid performance i don't think it was my favorite like shadow act that i've seen but uh it was good what about you eric um for me they were in my top four of the night i would have put them through oh they were um, for me too yeah i i thought they were really great um we've seen similar so many similar acts in the past but this is one of those types of acts where I can watch different acts do the same thing over and over again and still truly appreciate the effort it takes to pull something like this off. I would have put them through. It's something so, like... It, it's something that on paper wouldn't sound interesting, and yet when you watch it, it's just... It it blows... It, it really, it's like... It's really cool. It's re- both... I feel like it's also less effort a little bit. Like, some of these acts, like, you have a uh, light balance. Like, this is kind of just so much more simpler, and it's mm. just... You're literally just using a shadow and, and where pe- – I always also watch trying to figure out how they do it. Like yeah. there's a scene when they have the little kid. So maybe there's like the screen where they have – they're dancing behind and then standing – like I'm always trying – like it's, it's all perspective. And yeah. uh, I'm very I, – I, I enjoy it. It's just something I, I find cool. So yeah, they were in my personal top four of the night. 
Are we doing results now? Also? No, we'll, we'll save them. All right, we'll save results for the end. But uh, yeah, they... The thing is also, I... the one thing I will point out is when we get these acts, it's always... It's always the same. It's always, we're going to tell a story. There's going to be a big emotional ballad. It's going to be like an, an emotional journey. I almost, this is bad advice, and this is just me riffing here, but I would almost want, like, I feel like I would want something different, like a high energy, like, dance performance. Well, like shadow a shadow dance. That. What? Shadow dances can't be high energy, I don't think. I don't know. I feel like it could be cool. I, I'm just saying. This is just me spitballing here because that's just... Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to <laughs> potentially Eric's favorite act of the night, or at least one that he is going to have a lot to talk about. It is Hans. And before we even begin, how far did he make it on the show? I feel like he didn't even get what, through... Was he cut, like, in the judge cuts? No, not in the judge cuts. He made it the first live show. How is he a champion? He's not. <laughs> Just right there. He's like, not. I will say, though, I, I 100% remember this guy. Like, um... Yeah, me too. It's like, he's, he's like a flamboyant German guy, and he's, like, full of personality, and he is the kind of act that producers of these shows just love. Like... <laughs> They they love to give these guys uh, like the spotlight. So he plays uh, an accordion, and he kind of blends the line between comedy and a musical act. Eric, how much did you love it? <laughs> um, let's see. Well, I loved everything that happened before he started singing, and everything that happened after he started singing. Everything besides the performance on that stage, was awesome. The problem was, I thought the performance itself was horrific. So I'm torn. <laughs> I am, I, I, I'm not all negative on this guy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A few minutes ago, we were talking about Mike Young, and you said Mike Young was the weakest singer of the night. Weakest actual singer. I don't think that <laughs> Hans an actual singer. I Hans watched it. <laughs> Hans is not trying to be a singer. But that's the point. It's it's not. It's a singing act, but it's not a singing act. Like you kind of got to judge these cases kind of as their own unique thing. Like they're, they're it's in, it's its own category. Um, I was watching this, and I actually sent Eric a message. I said, "This guy reminds me. Like I would not be convinced if Hans is the newest alter ego of Sasha Baron Cohen." And I don't and know he, that he's not funny enough. Zing. He's uh, not funny enough. Uh, all right. Did he? All right. We're not going to talk about results here, but it's it's over the top. It's ridiculous. Simon actually buzzes him. I think. Yeah. He got he got the buzzer. Yep. Um. Which the my thing favorite, is my favorite part of a performance was when Simon, my favorite part of the act was when Hans tells Simon, "Next time I'll sing. I I'll, I dream a dream." I want that. I want that to actually happen. <laughs> um, I, I would like that. <laughs> Maybe you could turn it into like some German folk dance or something. I don't know. Uh, uh, but that's that funny though, right? What? Why that's funny though, right? Yes. It's because true. Susan Boyle. Oh, did it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're saying like, yeah, I'm, I'm not actually gonna sing. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. I I don't know what to make of these acts. I mean, it's it's not a winning act. It's kind of just an act. Here, it's just if I make it, I do it. I do, and if not, I not. I'm not like it's kind of they're they're just throwing things against the wall. Hans, it, it is what it is. That's all. Like I I don't even know how to put it into words. Okay, let's talk about my biggest disappointment of the episode. All right. So, Jack Vision, who I remember watching this kid's... It, I think it was, like, when YouTube was just launching, right? Was yeah, that the time? It was, ter- it was early, early era of YouTube. It was one of those... Actually, no, it wasn't that early. It was 2011. 2011. When did BGT start airing? 
It wasn't BGT. It was Australia's Got Talent. I know, but when did BGT start airing? Um, 2006. Oh, like I remember in that those years. Um, it's been so many years. Those it kind of blurs, but I I remember watching these performances. Like, I I never watched Amer- uh, Australia's Got Talent, but I I heard he won and he was really good. He sang uh Whitney Houston I have nothing which before it was absolutely like ruined for me and uh he sang uh I think uh one of an Adele song I remember watching and that was I don't know he he was like a little kid he was probably like I don't know 12 he was he was he was, he was, he was Bieber. yeah he was at that age when when they were when people were all like who's the next Justin Bieber and they would like find these little there were there were a bunch of them like all over the place but that was in 2011 and now we are nine years or eight years when this was filmed. So he is now 22. And right off the bat, he looks really different. Like, uh, Yeah. He got a lot of plastic surgery. But I, but I knew he did because I saw him on The Voice Australia last year, which is he's one of like two acts that I would watch that piece of crap show for. <laughs> but I did watch it for him. I watched all his performances. He was really good. He he is way better than this performance showed. He he can really sing. We saw a glimpse of what he can do in this performance, but I was expecting a lot more from him. So, in a way, I wanted him to make it through because he, based on pure talent, he's actually in the top tier of the night. But on the performance he actually gave, it's probably fifth, I think. Yeah, I mean, coming into the episode for me, he was the act I was most looking forward to, just because. I think in this episode, he is one of the few examples that I would maybe put on a real champion season. He like, is. Um, he, he would be on an actual champions episode. Yeah, he's he is ridiculously talented. And usually, like, when, when we have those young singers and they grow up, the voices change. But he's still, like, he's got it. And he's his story, story is, like, really depressing. Like, you don't even think like those videos that you watch like when you're a kid of these really talented people like being promised the world and then later on they go and explain how they're working in a deli. Like it's it's a little upsetting, but I'm glad he got the chance to kind of come like back. I mean, he is he the dude's having like a pretty well technically it was last year, but he was he was having a pretty good year. I mean, he went he was on The Voice Australia. Did he win what it, how did he no, do? No, he did not win. He got he made it to the semifinals. Was he a shock boot? I think so. Other people disagree, but I think it's a shock. I was surprised that he was booted. I mean, any like being a shock boot, I feel is better than in most cases for a lot of people. Like as yeah. bad as it is, it, it cements you as kind of like a bigger name. And I mean, are there wild cards for this season? Nope. No wild cards. Um. Yeah, such a such a bummer because he's really. I, I would, the one thing is though he 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 did something like to him like he looks it's, yeah like uh, almost unrecognizable but his voice is still pretty much what i remember and um what what was the song he sang i don't even remember what it was you say what's the oh. song called it was it was saying really beautifully i mean i don't know if it was like some nerves or something but yeah er- I like him a lot. This was not his best performance. All I right. really like him though, and I'm and I'm hoping he makes a comeback. I like him a lot. I'm gonna predict. Here's another prediction. Uh, we should have like Adam's prediction corner. <laughs> um, he's gonna be on Britain's Got Talent, the champions next season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they like they're just cycling through <laughs> these guys like uh, on Britain's Got Talent the Champions and America's well, honestly, Got Honestly, I'm hoping Britain's Got Talent the Champions isn't coming back so we can have a full normal season of X Factor again. <laughs> don't, don't be careful what you wish for, Eric. Non-celebrities, non-band, just actual normal like 2 years ago X Factor. All right. That's well, all I want. Let's move on. We got Duo Transcend. Uh, I remember these guys from two seasons think... ago? Was this Shin Lim season? Yeah, it was Shin Lim season, I think. Yeah, um, I remember them being highlighted very much, and I was kind of, eh. But what did you think? Well, they're a danger act, and we've established my feelings about danger acts before. 
So I'm not surprised they made it. I wouldn't have put them through personally. It's out of personal preference. I don't like these types of acts. I just don't like it because it's just I'm not impressed by it. Like it's, I, I've, it's way repetitive. It's you've seen it once, you've seen it all, which is kind of like I, I've seen this act, and I don't understand why the show is like so hyping them up as something. I mean, I'm, but then again, like with this super fans, you never know how the votes gonna actually end up going. But for me, I'm just like eh. I don't even know what to make of it. It's it it, it happened. Think, we've talked about this act so many times that there's nothing really to talk about anymore with this type of act. The, they do some flips. There's some there's some gas when they do something where it looks like he's gonna drop, drop. them, and uh, that's and, that's and what everyone, I got. Everyone lives and the show moves on. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about Dan Natterman, who I. I remember this name. I remember the guy's face. Um, he's a comedian and does not fall into the champions category at all. I think he maybe made it through one round. I think. Yeah. And it was um, it was a close one. This this was one of those occasions where I'm looking at it and I'm going, did he really have that many acts for the season? Like, was were there some backups? I mean. He's not in the same category as Jack. Like they're they're. The, the, what this episode almost reminded me, like except for a few exceptions, it just felt like a regular episode of Got Talent. Like it didn't feel like a champion season. It just felt like another season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like last season we had Paul Potts, we had Darcy. Again, but we had all of them last season. That's the problem. <laughs> I think they didn't think they were going to get another one, and they were just, like, throwing it all out there. Like, here's all yeah. our big names. Yeah. Which begs but, the question, though, how how long could this season go on for? Like, this this version of the show go on for? Like, um, This is going to be it, I think. I would have rather just had a Got Talent Champions in, like, the summer cycle and just have a full season of of it that way. No, no, disagree. Why? Because I like actually having a normal season. I wouldn't have minded. I would have. I would have liked another, you know, round. But what? Going back to Dan, what do you think of uh, his his jokes? I chuckled one or two times, which is one or two times more than I expected going into it. There has to be like some. No, there. there I'm pretty sh- positive. There's like rules regarding what you can. What your act can be. Like, it has to be... I want to say PG, but there was, like, one joke that wasn't PG. Like, there was... You know what I mean. But it kind of feels like the jokes are dumbed down. Like, it's not a real act. Like, if I was to see him live, this would not be a true reflection of what he is. Like, there's some acts that can kind of thrive in the America's Got Talent format. Dan is not one of those examples. I feel like he would be someone where you would... This is not, at least I would hope, a reflection of what his actual <laughs> stuff is. <laughs> Wasn't that funny, Eric? Stop laughing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... It's a bomb. That's what I got. Yeah, basically. Next. <laughs> Eric, next. <laughs> it's like, check. Next. All right. Well, we've only got... Uh, how many more we got? One, Three two, more. Three more. So, we move on to angelina jordan um so a lot of people were kind of hyping her up before the the episode started uh, she was kind of for me jack was the name i was going in excited for but a lot of people were pretty hyped about angelina can you tell me a little bit about her well i saw lots of hype around her too but i'd never seen her before before this episode aired i didn't even but... know norway had a got talent does every country have one there's a lot it of seems them. like it, it's, the, it's the current hot format anyway this is the one result we will talk about during because she got the golden buzzer from Heidi. And she earned it, I think. I think she earned it. I feel like the golden buzzer, at least the one thing, it, it, it kind of has some weight this round. Like, you know, um, in in the previous year when it was just one episode of performing, like with... um, You didn't skip anything with the golden buzzer last time. Yeah, so... it. 
It does feel like step around. it's one. I, I would rather just have no. The thing is, you never know with the super fans because the super fans could be super fans. And um, I, I, I don't know. It, it's just the, the, the results are kind of so heavy handed. You never know if you can actually trust it. But Bohemian Rhapsody, um, uh, one of my favorite songs of all time. I've been learning it actually on piano for about a year now, and I'm still not done, but I'm almost done. Uh, she does a very different version of it, uh, Jazzy. Um, what did you think? Sharon a Golden Buster. I thought she was really good. Damn hard song to sing, especially if you don't make it your own. She made it her own. I like her. I thought it was good. Um, I would have given it an A minus for me. Would just you just give uh, it a gold buzzer from this episode. That's hard. There's. Who I else would you have given it to? I would want to give it to Jack, but I don't know if he would. Well, here's the thing. I would think of the show differently. If I'm one of those judges, am I going to trust the acts to go to the super fan votes? Like. I feel like the super fans would more vote for Angelina. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a bit more strategic. I would have given it to Jack personally as well. I would have given it to Jack or the Shadow Dancers just because. I would have made that have made it, which they. I mean, but I can't like she she's the best act of the night. Uh, but yeah, I if you're asking me personally, I would go. I would probably go with Jack or the Shadow Dancers. Uh, the rendition. It's different. I don't think I've ever heard it this way. Um, maybe like postmodern jukebox, but I feel like that's too. It's not a modern enough song for them to have done it. If they did, I might be wrong. But I enjoyed it. I mean, it was good. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what was that? Nothing. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what I got for Angelina. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see her again. All right. Well, Chill let's move on. To Eddie Williams, he competed on Australia's Got Talent. So he is also a world record holder, and he's he's a strong man. He lifts things. He makes a show of it. What do you think? <laughs> the lifting things part was better than the singing part. The act was way too gimmicky for me, honestly. <laughs> it was way too gimmicky, and the voice wasn't great. I might have actually buzzed it. Wow. I don't think there should be buzzers for God Talent Champions, but... There shouldn't be. But if there are, this was the type of act that would get my buzzer. This was... Like I said, this episode did not feel like a Champions episode. It felt like a regular episode. Like, all the, most of these people, I was just going... Like, you're, you're not a champion. Like... This is not a champion at, like, maybe it's just me expecting too much. Yeah. Uh, I'm expecting too much. It's bad. Is it me because I'm expecting too much? Yes. Wow. It's bad. <laughs> Lower your expectations. There should be a song. Lower your expectations for America's Got Talent. <laughs> but um, it, what I can say for this performance is it happened. Yep. Anyway, let's move on to Danny as he has. All right, let's <laughs> talk about Discount Chin Lim. Yes, I went there. Danya Diaz, uh, she is a magician. It, it's Shin Lim Light. No, this is the exact act that Matt Franco did, by the way. The card's telling the story. I will say, though, Shin Lim Light isn't bad. Like it's it's a it's a good performance. She's not as good as she's not as good as Shin Lim, but I mean, she's good. She's I will really say good. I enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty solid. I feel like at I times will, she's in my top four of the night. I'll give her that. Me me too. I would say like she probably came in fourth for me though on my yeah, my fourth list. But um, I will say the act did feel very rehearsed. Like, I could hear, like, there's the break in her voice when she's saying dramatic things. It felt very... That's not a bad thing. It felt a little wooden. Like, it felt uh, like she's... I think it's part of it. Like, English is not her first language. 
True. And, yeah, but... I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's a very simple act. It's literally just... Telling a story by telling making just... cards appear. It was good. I liked it. I've seen it before, but I liked it. Yeah, I mean... How, how does she do it? <laughs> like, I, I'm trying to I figure it out. It's magic. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I mean... I've said I mean three times in a row. Uh, it was good. That's what I can say. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Fourth of the night. I didn't think it was big. Thank God she didn't do one of those the four boxes. Because my God. <laughs> That's coming. That's coming at some point. But anyway. At one point, we both know that there's going to be a four boxes. And what are you? What are you? I'm hoping it won't be on the champions, but it, it will be on the next season of something. It got Piff the Magic Dragon. Don't forget. Gets everybody. Everyone does it. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about some awards now. All right. So, how what are the awards we're handing out today, Eric? Well, actually, no. Scratch that. I'm held for edit. Before we have to, before we get to real awards, let's talk about some results. Right. Who's making it through, Eric? Um. Well, this episode we have four acts making it through. As we just said, Angelina gets the golden buzzer. Um. Dania gets through. Duo Transcend gets through. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of the ones. And then we have a middle three where the judges pick between Junior Creative Dance, Hans, and Jack Vision. And for some stupid reason... No, each of it's not one, stupid. Though. It's just Howie being Howie. Yeah, it's, it's Howie. Howie's um, gonna Howie. Howie's gonna Howie, and Han makes it through to the next round against all odds. Howie's gonna Howie. Take a look at me now. <laughs> That's the, the Phil Collins song. <laughs> against all odds. No? <laughs> but yes. Comes down to Jack, Hans, and the Shadow Dancers. And Howie picks the one wrong option. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's both it would be funny if it no it would be sad if i didn't like if it wasn't a howie is gonna howie situation it would be really sad but Here's the thing. if there was a prize i'd be pissed but there's no prize so who cares <laughs> you get a whole big pile of nothing now get into your car and get out of here yep. that's what they'd say to the winners um the, now, these results kind of sucked. Like, uh, Duo Transcend. I don't know why. Like, they're... Th- what, for me, what these... What America's Got Talent the Champions is, is, like, vindication a little bit for the producers. Like, their favorite acts. Like, we we built these acts over the, during their seasons, and you said, no, well, now we're going to put them through anyway. Yep. A little bit. So that's... Our that was super fans are going to put them through anyway. <laughs> anyway. Apparently, though, they're actually were super. The definition of a super fan is someone who just listens to what producers want. I, if you're going to put, all right, I'm going to rant for a little bit right now. If you're going to put together a panel of super fans to vote on the results, I want there to be a test. Every person who wants (laughs) to, there's going to be questions. Who came in second place on season 10? Who was the dog act who's who was the trainer of the dog act whose name was Falco? Like I want questions like that. I want see you don't even know. Eddie. What? Eddie. Lucas, I thought was his name. Oh, it was Lucas. I want there should be a test. And I want to see the test. No? Sure. Alright. Well I I enjoy the idea of there being a test. All right, what are the awards we're handing out today? Best of the week, worst of the week, and best judge of the episode. Oh, that don't make me do that. Don't make I me do to. that last one. I have to. All right, which one are we doing first? I'm, we're, we're each going to pick our own. So I'm going to do best of the week. My best of the week was Angelina Jordan. My best of the week was a three-way tie between Angelina Jordan, Jack Vigeon, and the Shadow Dancers. I like your answer better. Let's go with your answer. <laughs> worst of the week. Worst of the week. Oof. Um, 
Probably Dan Adderman, honestly. Really? Yeah, I thought that was that was. I, I thought Eddie was worse. They're both bad. Like that's 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 asking someone to choose between like their favorite foods being spinach and radish radishes. Lots of people like spinach. Anyway, I don't, <laughs> but lots of people do. You know what I mean. So, or, or so I've been told. Um, and favorite judge, I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna say it's a freeway tie between Simon, Alicia, and Heidi. That was a reference. <laughs> can I pick E? None of the above. Fine, you can pick none of the above this week. I mean, okay. Why can't we have Howard Stern back? <laughs> Why can't he be one of the, the champions? <laughs> like, uh, I, do you remember the days when there were actually like really funny acts on these shows? Like when Paul Zerden put that mask on Howie and made him do <laughs> Irish dancing. That was great. <laughs> Next episode for a couple acts that I'm excited to see again. There's one act that I saw that I am super excited. I'm so excited for him that I'm positive he will not make it through. I know exactly which one you're. I think you're talking about. Well, it's a certain clown. I know. And anyway, uh, I'm excited for a clown too, but not the clown that you're. Not the actual clown. All right, tell me who's going to be coming up next week, Eric. Okay, so next episode, the acts that will be performing are Boogie Storm. They're the stormtroopers. Yes, I like them. Ben Black. No idea who he is. Oh, I remember Ben Black. Ah, he was on the last good season. Okay, glad you enjoy him. Collabro. <laughs> they were the, they, the four they, singers on Britain's Got Talent. They are the um, theater boy band. I like them. Mark Spell. No, oh, they're not a boy band? They're, weren't they're, they like they're, opera singers? A theater boy band. Oh. Like a, like a show tune boy band. Okay. Mark Spellman or X who was the first act to be a finalist twice on Britain's Got Talent. Second right. time he answered as X and anonymously. One of the best plot twists in BGG history was when he took off his mask and revealed who he was. Um, Luke Islam is back. Oh, oh, you know what I'm thinking. You what? know what I'm thinking. What? I'm thinking The Greatest Show. <laughs> this okay. is me. Okay. All right. um, Oath Perlman, magician. Oh, great, good, good find. He's a champion. He's he's one of the ones that third place. He's a third placer. Um, he's Puddles a big name. Pity Party, the one you're excited about. Yeah, Simon's gonna buzz him again, isn't he? I can't wait. Um, <laughs> we we need to make him sad. He he can't just sing. He has to be a sad clown. Anyway, Ryan E. Miller. Yeah, he's my favorite. Spencer Horseman, no idea who that is. Ah, oh, I love Spencer Horseman. He was awesome. He's an escape artist. Great. He was and on the Mar- wild card show. He went first. And Marcel Pop- Pomoy. No idea who that is. Never do I. Anyway, so next week I think it'd be a lot better than this week. Based on the cover, a couple acts I'm genuinely excited to see again. I mean, Ben Black, I feel like I mean, him and Spencer Horseman were on the same season. They were... Yeah, I think they were both in the same wildcard episode. Like, they were... I think Spencer opened the show, Ben... Anyway, but... Sounds like a sounds like a good match. A good group. Yeah, I watched it as a good group. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, but no winners, right? Um, oh, no, Collab. Collab Row 1. I don't know about the others. We'll have to second and third places, so... All right. Well... Uh, is that everything for today, I think? That wraps up today's episode, so... All right, well, then I can say I'm Adam Samuel. You can find me on Twitter, at Adam Soapbox, or my two websites, adamsoapbox.com and adamcvblog.com, neither of which I've updated in, I think, a year now. <laughs> I swear, one of these days I will make another post. I've been super busy with another project. It has consumed my life, but... There's no but, but... That's what's happened. Where, where can we find you, Eric? EricAsher.com, which has been fully redesigned. And has a, I'm on WordPress now, which means it looks, doesn't look like shit anymore. So yay for that. Um, 
It was a blogger before. Blogger was the worst. I can he go was on the wall. Blogger? Go cheaper. back to 2000 and something. It was, blogger was cheaper than WordPress, but I figured out a nest in it and it would make the website not look terrible anymore. Um, and then um, Eric underscore Asher on Twitter and bit.ly slash Eric Law Vids for my YouTube channel. All right. Until next time, guys. Peace.